Tengo. More specifically, Kengo 2 Legacy of the Blade, but the one I'm playing is called Sword of the Samurai. Let me explain. Kengo was developed by the Japanese company Genki as kind of a spiritual successor to the more popular Bushido Blade series. Kengo 2 Legacy of the Blade was released in 2002 in Japan and one year later published by Ubisoft in Europe under the name Sword of the Samurai for literally no reason. It was never released in America. <laughs> The game tried to go for a more realistic approach, as opposed to the more action-slash-anime look and feel of Bushido Blade. This is noticeable in the gameplay, but also in the visuals. This is a really beautiful game, even though it doesn't get any praise for the graphics. It might not be the most technologically impressive game on the PS2, but it does have some clever things that make it look really nice. Fake reflections on the wood flooring of the dojos, subtly using pictures for backgrounds, great usage of pre-rendered backgrounds, some nice cloth physics, it all adds up in beautifying this game. All the settings, clothing, match the Edo period pretty accurately as far as I know, and the way they represent customs and traditions is really accurate and seems to follow the Bushido code. The Bushido code being like the rule book for how a samurai should act or present themselves and so on. Think of it like a European's knight's rules of chivalry, but with significant differences. And it's for samurai. That's right, I know a bit about Japanese culture. You think just because I look like that inbred Austrian dude that I don't know about the fucking Bushido code? Guess what? I do. And guess what again? I'm not even inbred. At least I don't think I am. This game took kind of a risky move when it comes to sound design. There's basically no music in the game. This means that in the fights, you'll just be hearing beautiful nature sounds. But I think it really adds to the more realistic nature of the game. You've got birds. You've got cicadas. Cicadas? Cicadas? You've got crickets. Realistic foot shuffling. Sick. Although I love the more minimalistic approach to the sound design, some sounds can be really annoying. Like it's a really short loop or something. Just listen. In general, I appreciate the direction of the sound design and I think it fits quite nicely with the gameplay. Sword of the Samurai doesn't really have a story, but I'll take you through the game and explain some gameplay elements as we go. You start by choosing a face, an outfit, and naming your character. I chose a good, strong western name, Stinkweenie. The game starts with a little cutscene, where Stinkweenie sees a, an outdoor tournament and decides to join in. You get absolutely zonked because you don't know how to play yet. After losing, a dojo master shows up and invites you to his dojo. Because you lost, but you lost in a cool way, I guess. You go home and this menu shows up. These are all your stats. Your strength is your health. And in order to recover your health and apply all of the upgrades, which happen after every fight, you need to rest and let an in-game day go by. The fame stats are really only important during the late game, but basically you gain good fame by winning fights with wooden swords, fighting in dojos, outdoor tournaments, all that stuff. And you gain bad fame by being a devious little stink. I created an explosive bomb and put it in my sister's lunchbox and blew her to smithereens. And participating in the unofficial tournaments. These are secret tournaments where you use real swords and if you lose, you die. And it's back to the last save. So you join the guy's dojo and he teaches you all of the basics. Attack, defend, parry, and all of that. You can then edit all of your moves and create different forms. Forms are basically movesets that you can use while fighting. This is really cool and gets more in depth the more you play. When you fight a samurai, you can learn some of their moves and apply them to one of your forms, which gives you this cool feeling that you're collecting all of the best moves to become the perfect samurai. Anyway, you beat the shit out of everyone in this dojo and your master is like, go beat up my dojo bros. Bye. See ya. Fair weather, friend. This is when you face your first real challenge. In order to beat these guys, you first have to beat one of their pupils and then one of the dojo bros straight after. In order to beat especially this guy, Ugh, I can't. This guy sucks. You have to train. Hard.
can eat fucking shit and not get sick. How's that? I can eat hepatitis, lace, fecal matter. <laughs> Didn't even try. After that, you get invited to participate in the governor's tournament, where you have to beat these five guys in a row. These could be guys you see in the outdoor tournaments, or even one of the dojo bros. Oh, it's this asshole. If you lose, you have to defeat the dojo bros again to get invited to the tournament again. You can probably already tell one of the bigger flaws of the game is that it's pretty repetitive. But the training, losing, and finally overcoming the challenge is kind of part of the experience, you know? Anyway, after completing the governor's tournament, the governor gives you a new sword, and you're off to the big city, Edo. Now that you're in Edo, you've got some new stuff to do. The outdoor tournament and an official tournament are still available, but now you have the recruiter, betting matches, and three new dojos. Let's start with the recruiter. The recruiter is a friendly little man that gives you different missions. Some can give you good fame, like the rescue missions or protect missions, and others can give you bad fame, like the assassin missions. But another great thing this attractive fella gives you is info. Info on Kengos. Kengos are these legendary samurai that show up in specific places. Beat them and you can get a lot of fame and their unique movesets. The betting matches are a way to get new swords. You go into this beautiful field and get the choice between two swords. You beat their owner and you get their sword. It's a cool idea, but you never know if it's gonna be an amazing level 4 sword or a shitty level 1 sword. The best I ever got was a level 3 sword, but I know level 4 ones exist. I've seen it. Or did I? So you have to join one of these three dojos, and this is by far the worst part of the game. First of all, this guy won't shut up. <sighs> Damn, he likes talking, huh? When you join one of the three dojos, they don't allow you to go out and do missions or whatever. If you do, they give you a little sermon. Oh awesome, he he's talking again, cool. So you're stuck here. While you're here, you need to learn the dojo moves. They're pretty good moves, but every move takes one in-game day, and then it's another day for the advancement test, where you basically just do the same thing. So you just do the same boring thing twice, and there's loading screens in the middle. I'm bored. But when it's done, you never have to see these losers, and you've got some pretty good moves. So after losing a bunch of missions, practicing, getting swords, beating famous Kengos, you'll get enough fame to get invited to the Shogun's tournament. You use the remaining days to train as much as possible, and you're off to the tournament. Basically, you have to beat all these guys in a row. These are like the best of the best. They're faster than you and stronger, so you gotta play really smart. Or you can just do this move. <laughs> Outplayed. You bow to the Shogun and... that That's it. Um, I really enjoyed this game, but I can't help but feel like there's so much missing. Like, imagine if this game had a small open world like Persona. Instead of clicking a button on a menu, you would actually go to a place to visit the recruiter, for example. And the ending? Like, come on. It ends so abruptly. Also, the repetitiveness in some parts really take away from the replayability of the game. But still, I, I think there's a lot to love here, and I recommend anyone to try it if you're into this kind of stuff. It really makes you feel like you're on this cool adventure to become the best samurai ever. The way every fight is so intense and really important, it's just a lot of fun. And if you're gonna play this game, I would like to challenge you and tell me how many days it took you to beat it. In-game days, that is, not real-life days. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching.